Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the channel. So, um, this is your first time watching um, one of my videos. I would encourage you to go back and watch some of my old, um, older content uh, to kind of get a gauge of what it is that I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm trying to convey. Uh, as well as um, comment in the comment section, man. You know, I like engaging with, um, you know, Kane's fans, non Kane fans. Um, you know, let's just be respectful about it. But anyway, I started this channel probably about two or three weeks ago. So some of the content that I make is from talking points that may have occurred um, earlier in the season. And so since the season is over, you know, what better what better way to somewhat confront them or, or just bring them back up so we can kind of get an understanding of how we got to this particular point, right? So one of the big issues that I remember hearing out of spring was that the wide receivers were inconsistent. Um, a lot of drops. Now, we've been dealing with drops in this particular program. I think two of the biggest things that have plagued this program, at least, um, again, I'm only in my early 30s. So during the Randy Shannon era, I was kind of in high school, so I wasn't so much immersed um, in Kane football, like being able to go to different forums and get into different outlets and stuff like that because – that was before YouTube was even what YouTube is. So you kind of weren't around and you you, you kind of didn't see as many um, things as you see now that's covering Kane's football. So, but as far as from Al Golden on up, um, I was I was knee deep in it. Well, neck deep in it, right? So just going back to the Golden era, um, two of the biggest things that have played this program are pass catchers, um, tackling. Now, obviously, we know the offensive line has been an issue as well. I think it's been a it's been deteriorating, at least in my opinion, since 2014, which was Brad's first year starting. I think that was the last uh, offensive line that we could look at and said that was, you know, it's not the greatest, but if we could insert that offensive line into uh, last year, if we could have inserted the offensive line into 2019, I think that offensive line would have been one of the best. I'm not saying one of the best in the country, but it would have been one of the best. But what I want to talk about is pass catchers, right? I see a lot of, you know, people saying, obviously, you know, we need to bring in portal wide receivers. We need to bring in portal wide receivers. So we've kind of, we've been hit on the portal uh, side. Got Charleston Rambo last year. I uh, got K.J. Osborne in 2019. Uh, we had um, Kobe Young and Frank uh, Frank Lance in this particular year. And those guys have been solid. Those guys have been serviceable. Um, Charleston Rambo had a monster year last year. But we've dealt with drops, right? We've, we've, we've dealt with drops in this particular program. If you look at, obviously, you're looking at the thumbnail to click on the video. And so if you don't know who those four guys are, that's Mike Harley. That's Philip Dorsett, that's Rashawn Scott, and it's Clive Walford, right? So those are four guys who, at the conclusion of their UM career, uh, some of the issues that plagued them early on, which were drop passes, that wasn't something that we saw in that last year. Obviously, Philip Dorsett had such a good last year. Philip Dorsett ended up going in the first round. Clive Walford had such a good uh, final year, he was up for the Mackey Award, right? Rashawn Scott was one of those guys that, from all the practice reports, was just one of those guys that, man, if he just puts it all together, he's going to have a big year. So we remember the NC State game where Rashawn Scott had a monster game, right? A couple of them catches obviously were because NC State jumped out sides, but that was one of the probably the more exciting UM games in recent memory uh, with Stephen Morris hitting none other than Philip Dorsett for the um, – the game ceiling um, touchdown, you know what I mean? And then obviously, of course, we got Mike Harley. Mike Harley, who admitted saying that, hey, I put in the extra work. And Mike Harley, at the beginning of his UM career, wasn't looked at as one of those consistent guys. A lot of people fell in love with the uh, Jeff Thomas, obviously, Amon Richards, um, you know, guys of that particular yoke, even, you know, Braxton Berrios to, you know, a lesser, well, yeah, to a lesser extent. But I commend Mike Harley for putting in that work, right? And so all four of those guys had issues early on. And um, 
One of the things that we have said over the last decade or so is that guys have not developed, right? We haven't developed the talent the way that we need to develop talent. But I feel like those are four guys who were developed. Now, developed to me um, is, is just like coaching and player. It's a 50-50 deal. I can, as a coach, I can put you through drills uh, throughout, you know, practice, all that good stuff like that. But after that, it's up to you to maybe get on the jugs machine. After that, it's up to you and the quarterback to get together, to work on route timing and, and, and all of those particular different things like that. So that brings me up to this particular year, going back to the spring, as I said, where we were plagued with drops. That was, that was something that they said that the staff was looking at and saying, man, the receivers are dropping the ball. And so my thing is this, right? I'm all for bringing in a portal wide receiver, right? I'm all, I'm all, I'm all for it, guy. If, 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 a, if a guy can come in and make the team better, I'm all for it. But at the same time, I do feel that those are four examples. And I can add to that. Uh, um, Njoku, David Njoku. David Njoku dropped balls, you know? David Njoku was the guy who dropped balls. He ended up going the first round, right? It may have been more so off the measurables, but he was being able, he was, you know, he was being able to put statistics together after we finally settled on a position because, you know, remember it was a report that, shoot, they had David and Joker on the defensive side of the ball, right? He was just such a raw, raw athlete, right? So I feel like some development went in on um, and his, you know, for him. Uh, Will Mallory, again, just getting a little bit more up to date. Will Mallory, a guy who has dropped balls, but I feel like this 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 past year, um, he's dropped some balls. But again, I don't I don't really know what Will Mather may be going through through you know from a health. You know he's he seems to be boxed up. But I've seen some I've seen some burst with Mallory this particular year, and I think just that that pass that he caught um, going up the left sideline uh, this last game is just infuriating because it's like man we should have been using this guy like this all year and so um that's that's kind of the way i look at it right is that give the guys time right everyone is talking about hey you gotta give coaches time get coaches time i see a lot of people saying man hey man we don't have receivers we don't have nfl caliber receivers and stuff like that and it's always interesting man when i see people say that stuff and i say man some of y'all are saying that and y'all have good viewpoints, but then some of y'all are saying it because it's it's a herd mentality. You see somebody else say it and then you don't, you rather not try to do the research for yourself. And those are just four, those are just four examples of guys who had drop issues and got developed. And Mike Harley, I mean, let's think about this, man. Back in 2019, 2019. I don't think anybody in 2019 would be looking looked at Mike Harley in 2019 the same way they look at Mike Harley in 2022, because this this <laughs> idiotic narrative uh, came up that hey, Mike Harley and Charleston Rambo bailed TVD out. I've never heard such rhetoric in my life, but again, you got to realize where is this coming from? Is this coming from? Uh, a simple critique or is this coming from a person that feels like another one of the quarterbacks you've just fallen in love with them so any any chance that you get to maybe diminish the quarterback you're going to take that shot right but Braxton Berrios another one right Braxton Berrios was a guy who again fan base overlooked right I mean he was reliable you know for, for the most part but it was a situation where it's like, man, we don't want Braxton Berrios out there, man. And so, again, that kind of goes back to wanting the guy to be at a particular point when you want them to be there. But that doesn't mean that they are ready to be at that particular point, right? And so I do feel like we have talent in the wide receiver room. I really, I, I really do feel that we do have talent in the wide receiver room. And then another guy, Charleston Rambo. Charleston Rambo was played with drops at, at, at OU. And came here, he dropped some balls. So much so that they were talking about him dropping balls in spring. But that didn't stop him from catching over 70 balls this past year, over 1,000 yards. And so, like I said, I like to put stuff in perspective and put stuff into, in, in particular context. But obviously with the portal now, you're supposed to be able to speed the process up if you are getting quality guys in return. But I do feel like, again, um, we've seen guys at the wide receiver position come in, have drop issues, 
and they've gotten better. Now, could they be uh, the situation about the wide receiver coaches, um, certain coaches teaching certain things over others? I feel like Kevin Beard was a was a was a good guy. Uh, for the for the standpoint of Kevin Beard was one of those highly rated guys that came to UM, so he can kind of somewhat um, help guys. He was very instrumental um, in helping with um, Stacy Coley, um, and you know then we leave we go from him to Ron Dugans, who was more block oriented, kind of more tough nose about it. Guys still caught balls, but we could see that the emphasis was kind of on blocking and the guys uh, blocked exceptionally well, right? Um, Brendan Carroll, for crying out loud, was a wide receiver coach here. But we talked about him, but I do think that the guys did perform moderately well when, you know, when we put everything into, in, into context. But anyway, um, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of uh, Jacoby George. I do think that we have talent. Uh, Kobe Young is a talented young guy. Uh, Romello Brinson. But again, like I said, we don't we don't know how this is going to shake out, you know, with the portal. But I do think that we do have guys that can catch the ball and be put in positions to excel. We just have to mate them up with with with, with something that could that could help them, right? So. As always, it's all about the you. Like, share, subscribe. Peace.